views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to Open. We are open, you see? <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. It's the show that brings the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, the Doc Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. And guess what? We have another fantastic show lined up for you today. Coming up on today's show, we'll sit down with an author and learn about uh, his new book with the goals to build character in men. It's going to be all, all, shall I say all that in a bag of chips? We can say it. Yeah. All right, plus we'll take a look at a, a walk working to raise awareness of suicide and programs and services the organization provides. After that, Gail Allen of No FICO Score Group, she stops by with information on the real estate and short sales and more. You want to learn about that. And then we'll check out an event leading up to Mother's Day, filled with small businesses and empowerment programs. And then my man Bobby C. has the latest in the headlines of the world of sports. You don't want to miss that. In fact, right now, you can kick off your shoes and relax your feet, if you can. Later on, we'll preview, <laughs> we'll preview an event honoring seven young mothers as we bring in spring. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way, because we are now open. <laughs> I'm your host, the Doc Bob Lee, and you're watching Open, the live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. You can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest is an author and educator and joins us today for a look at his new book, The Ten Step Man, M period A period N. Put a period after that, too. We'll learn more. Edward Moraine is in the house. Give him a big round of applause, everybody at home and in the studio. Thank you for stopping by. First Thank time you. on air? No. The, I've been, on, been on, open. On, on open. First time on open, yes. All right, so where's the initiation crew? <laughs> <laughs> we welcome you to the Thank show. You. Thank you. We're going to make you feel nice and comfortable. Thank you. You have a wonderful book out. But yes. uh, tell us, when did you start writing? Uh, for this, I think I've been writing all my life, but then I finally put it to paper about yeah. five years ago. A lot of this us have a third book in us. Yeah. You, yeah, you think about what you want to do, but right. then you, how am I going to yeah. do this? It's the yeah. fear of not knowing. Then you find out how to do it step by step. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you completed the 10 steps, and right. now you got the 10-step man. Right, exactly. But after your third, this is your third book. This is my third book, right. right. Yeah, this is my third one. And this, this book, basically, like I said, I've been writing it, uh, well, I should think living it all my life, and then ultimately, uh, about five years ago, I guess, after I graduated graduate school, then I decided to put it in writing. Right. And um, it's basically due to the experiences of men interacting with them, conferences and consulting with them. And, um, you know, I'm a pastor of a church, so yeah. I deal what with a lot of that? men. Unity at Mount Vernon, ba and, All and right. Mount Vernon New York. All right. Yeah. yeah. So in dealing Big with men, everybody out there, the well, so Mount Vernon, the Unity. But yeah, I'm yeah, from yeah. the Bronx, BX. Uh -huh. Straight up from the Bronx, born and raised. Now you're in the Upper Bronx. Now Mount I'm, Vernon. yeah, yeah. Used to be a part of the Bronx, uh, but Mount Vernon, and uh, we do a lot in terms of mm. consulting with men, the challenges that men go through, yeah. and just trying to build a better character and a better man in order to alter the perception of men in society. So yeah. I think that this book came about at the right time, and it's been doing really well. And yeah. so, thanks for having us here. You're, you're in line with uh, some of the things that Steve Harvey's doing with the uh, men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, from the simple, basic stuff of uh, right. learning how to tie a tie and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. We're open today, by the way. You don't, you know, yeah, have to wear no, a tie freedom. Today. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> you got to know how to tie one when That's you, right. wanna, you need to wear one. That's right. So, give us a quick, a quick synopsis about <clears throat> what's in this book. Well, the 10 step man stands for M, I put the acronym to it, man, M A N. Uh, 
but it stands for man abomination. And what we tried to do was look at the various issues that men face. And you know, men go through a lot of stuff oh, yeah. in life that are often undetected and untalked about. And um, this book tries to highlight those issues. It deals with uh, some of the things that men come up against. You have the title, the, the, the subtitle of the book, A Practical Guide to Peace, Power, Purpose, and Liberation yeah. in a World of Women, Wine, War, and Wickedness. Uh, so that's just the, the many various challenges that men face. And the One subtitle? Thing is, the subtitle, right. In the subtitle, In a World of Women, Wine, War, and Wickedness. That's not to suggest, and many people always ask me, does that mean that women are part of the evil. No, women are some of the challenges that men face. Temptations mm -hmm. is what the book is all about. Wine in terms of drunkenness, war within terms of internal. We fight wars within ourselves yeah. that men don't like to talk about trauma, etc. And then wickedness in terms of the spiritual aspect of things we get into this book as well. So um, the book basically not only deal with the problems, because we could highlight the problems all day. We could talk about our problems all day, but we try to yeah. come to solutions. Yeah. Biggest thing we could have is solutions and how we can uh, fight off the very various uh, temptations and the various uh, challenges, issues that we have. And so yeah. that's what the book goes into trying to deal with. Get any of, get, did you get any of it from, uh, from the Bible? Yeah, the whole thing is based on Ephesians 6, and it, yeah. it, although it, it, it covers it, it doesn't go so much into the biblical, but it, it takes the steps from the biblical. Right. In other words, the whole arm of God. It is a section in the Bible, Ephesians 6, if you look at it, it says put on the whole arm of God, the helmet of salvation. So we turn that into mind. How do you deal with your mind? Yeah. Uh, the blessed plate of righteousness. We turn that into a place where you're talking about community. And, uh, good, you know, good, I used good. to be a big social advocate, still am, civil rights organization, head of the NAACP, so I'm very much community oriented. Yeah. There's a piece in there that talk about righteousness and equating it with justice, fighting off racism, et cetera. And then we put on a, uh, the feet fitted with the gospel of peace. So then you talk about moving men in the right direction, mm. how we often make mistakes, make bad decisions, go in wrong direction, and then regret it, get frustrated by it, and then take out our mm. anger on other people. Instead of trying to walk in the right direction or, or redirect ourselves and walk in the right direction. Mm. So it, it, it has a lot to do with the biblical aspect, but yeah. it turns those biblical um, attributes into principles. Into what's in happening to, today. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> in order to make it relevant. No <coughs> Jesus, no peace. Uh, okay. <laughs> no Jesus, <laughs> right? You no gotta peace. have Jesus in there somewhere, right? But it it it, it it's a um it, it's a book that goes expands beyond uh, just the religious and just the the Jesus part. Although uh, you know, as a Christian, we could relate to it in terms of that aspect. But I believe that all men, all religious identities and groups can identify with it, yeah. Because it something that men face, regardless of your race, uh, regardless of your religion. And regardless of your your social affiliation, yeah. I think that it, you we do go through all, all men and can relate. If I were to sit down and talk to you about some of the issues that you're facing, uh, whether you were white or black, you could relate to it, and right. um, that's where we come in. But being that the, the Christian aspect in it, it uh, male racism, et cetera, is in it, um, we we would we would go to a certain student, socioeconomic group. So that the would next relate. one would be. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, yeah. The um, the ten step right woman. I'll let I'll let somebody I'll let somebody else write that one. Uh. Yeah, I think I think women know more about women A womb. in terms yeah. of what they yeah what they do. But I can't I wouldn't get into the woman part of it. Although I, I think this book, a lot more women buy it. A lot more women are readers. A lot more women give it to their men. A lot more women read it with their men because they find value in it. Yeah. in terms of the information. And I wrote it along those lines because I wanted women to understand more about men and the challenges sure. that we face. Because yeah. many times they, uh, you know, we could be blamed for things that we don't even understand and that they don't understand. And as a result of that, we get into more conflicts than we get into yeah. more confidence with each other. What's one of the things that you can think of right now that you would like women to know about men? Um, I think that the biggest thing is that uh, security I think a lot of men uh, lack security about themselves, lack confidence about themselves as a result of something that was done mm -hmm. earlier in life. And as a result of that, they're very sensitive to disrespect, very sensitive to um, things that women may say that could cause conflict in their lives and cause conflict in their relationship. So I would just say that uh, a man is used to being built up and he wants to be built up, but he has to take care of his own insecurities in order to have that happen so that when things are thrown at him, there's a great portion in this book, if you read it, there's a great part in this book that called The Shield of Faith, which means that whenever somebody 
throw something at you. Civil rights leaders use it a lot also. Oh. They throw stuff at you. You don't let it get to you. I think sometimes re non realizing men are very sensitive in certain areas that they don't know about. And not sensitive in uh, a way that would put them down, uh, uh, put them down, but a way that would really make them intolerant. Yeah. And so when you throw things at them, they get messed up. Uh, you throw insults at them, they get messed up. But there has to be a shield where you could not allow things to get to you. Uh -huh. And that's where we often mess up. Because if somebody says something to you, throw an insult at you, we immediately, it gets to our heart, we get angry, we ready to fight, we ready to holler. So I think that if we put up our shield of faith, no matter what anybody throws at us or come uh -huh. at us, if we could be a guy run, running down the street honking the horn. I just had a guy honk his horn at me and started insulting me right when I was coming in front of Lehman College. <laughs> could you believe that? In the Bronx. Yeah. So I said, you know, instead of me getting all uptight and upset, wanting to fight, most brothers with immaturity, weakness, yeah. somebody has to do that. Down. Somebody, somebody has to, a, somebody a entertain themselves. Yeah. And so that's, that's where it comes in, in terms of not letting things get to you so that you could be the man and don't get into unnecessary trouble. Who Got wants it. to get into unnecessary trouble? Where can we go for more information? Well, go to edwardmulrain.com, edwardmulrain.com. I'm going to say this right now. The first 10 people who email me, if you go to edwardmulrain.com, there's a space there to email me. I'll send you a book absolutely free. Okay. I'll send it to anybody who's emailed me. The first ten who email me at edwardmulrain.com. Edwardmulrain. Edwardmulrain.com. Dot com. All right. More yes. rain. More rain. <laughs> Let it grow. Let it grow. There That's you right. Go. That's but it's right. not the the rain that you spell it. Spell it. M U L R A I N E. M U L R A I N E. I just threw it in there. More rain. More rain. More rain. Because <laughs> we got <laughs> your seeds. Rain. Things can grow. That's right. But it's plant your seeds. Growing. That's plant right. Plant your seeds. That's right. Plant then it out. There'll be a harvest time. Thank you. Thank you. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Bro. Edward Morane in the house. Thank you, All right. Bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll take you, a quick man. break right here, but uh, stay right there. We'll be back with more next. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. And welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, the Doc Bob Lee. And on June the 8th, the Solis House will hold their Sunrise Walk to the Bronx to raise awareness of suicide. And joining us, we have the details with a uh, beautiful young lady by the name of uh, Rebecca Sked. She's the CEO. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you All so right. much for inviting us on. So you have this situation here. You started this organization. When did you start uh, 2015, we opened our doors in Long Island City in Queens. Um, yeah. So we still have that center. That's our full-time headquarters. And we opened our second center um, in September in Yonkers on McLean Avenue. Long Island City off of Vernon Boulevard? Yes. Yeah, oh, very close. Okay. Yeah. Well, I grew up in the area. Right? Oh, That's very good. Nice You're familiar with Queens it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are located within the New York Irish Centre building um, yes. on Jackson Avenue. Oh, okay. There, yeah. There we go. yeah. Good food back there too. <laughs> yeah. um, so you started this program. Tell us about the, why you started it, how you started it. Um, so we actually originated from an Irish organisation known as uh, Pieta House. Um, through the Irish Centre, we reached out to them a couple of years ago and we met with the founder. Um, and previous CEO, Joan Freeman. Yeah. Um, originally, we wanted to do the walk over here, so that's kind of how the conversation started. 
Um, she came over here and she quickly distinguished that there was a desperate need for a free service. Um, within a couple of months, we opened our doors and since then we've just been really busy and doing really great work. So where's the walk going to take place? Uh, we have multiple venues in New York. The closest one for here would be Gaelic Park. Um, Gaelic Park? Yeah, so on Broadway. Um, and we, so we start there and we walk into Van Cortlandt Park, do a quick 5k loop there and then back to Gaelic, Gaelic Park for breakfast. Oh, okay. What yeah. are we serving? Um, an Irish breakfast, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're always talking about food. F him, yeah. tell me that. Ask what she's serving. So we can all come down and break bread. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, it's an important thing, and you're doing it for a wonderful cause. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so at Solace House, as I said, we have two centers in New York. Mm -hmm. um, we provide free one-on-one -on -one therapeutic support for people who are suicidal, have made a suicide attempt, engage in self-harm, or have been bereaved by suicide. Mm -hmm. um, we also offer community awareness workshops, family support for our clients' families, and sure. group bereavement counseling as well. What are the signs of suicide? Um, so you'll see here we have, we spell out the word signs. Um, spell out the word signs. Yeah, so the sleep disturbance. Sleep disturbance. If sleep disturbance. one of your colleagues, one of your family members, they're complaining they're tired, they look exhausted, okay. um, that might be a sign that they're not getting much sleep and you know that they have a lot on their mind could be suicidal. Yeah. Um, isolation, somebody who may be very active, um, may have went to loads of events, met up with their friends, just completely stopped doing that. Um, isolated themselves, kind of hiding themselves away, yeah. don't, don't want to engage with anybody. Um, giving away possessions, that's a huge trigger. Um, no interest in anything and speaking of no future. Just giving all their personal items away? Giving their personal items like away, they're preparing yeah. For something. They're preparing, they know that they're going to do this. Um, people are important to them and some of their items are important and it's kind of their way of letting yeah. um, their family members know, you know, you're important, here's a token to show you that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's a major trigger. No interest in anything, you know, sports, socializing, again, just completely cutting off that contact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of no future, you know, somebody who's not making plans, doesn't want to go on that vacation anymore, doesn't want to apply for that college course, all of those are indicators. And that's that also a big sign of depression. Yes, you know, yes. Yeah. And you very often people two, who are depressed can yeah. develop into having suicidal ideation. Yeah. Um, so and we you never know what's in the minds or on no, the minds of people, no, you know. No. You think of Phyllis Hyman and Mm -hmm. um, the young man from CNN and yeah. a lot of Everybody other people. Everybody said it's always the people who you don't expect. Yeah. They, they put on a very brave face. Uh, yes. They're the strongest yeah. people ever. A lot of entertainers too. They entertain mm -hmm. you and make you happy and everything. Yeah. But they have a deeply rooted yeah. problem going Absolutely. on in their lives. Yeah. So by doing the walk, um, it's a huge fundraiser for us. But more so, it's to create awareness around suicide and mental health. So we encourage families to get out there, bring their kids, bring their teenagers, start the conversation yeah. early and get rid of that stigma that surrounds mental health. Yeah. Um, we want to offer hope for people who are in despair. That's why we do it when, while it's dark out, 4.30 in the morning, and we walk into the sunlight. So it's very symbolic. Um, it's symbolic. Yeah. Uh, just offering hope, you know, going from a place of darkness into a place of light. Gotcha. Um, and we want to reinforce the message you are not alone, there are services there. Yeah. Start the conversation, ask somebody who you're worried about, are you okay, can I get you some help? So this program, you can go in, get the help, and there's a follow-up, right? Because sometimes you have a number of programs out there where you come in, you see the person, and then some programs don't have that follow-up. And that's We're what's an needed ongoing, in so we see people once or twice a week, depending on how high yeah. risk they are. And that's ongoing until the client's ready to close with Excellent. us. Yeah. yeah, so that's good. So if there's someone out there that knows of someone who has a problem or who has a problem themselves, they can contact you. Yes, of course. And we accept referrals through other people. So a family member, a friend, if the person doesn't want to call themselves, if they don't have that confidence, if they're scared, if they just physically can't make the yeah, call. They may be just down and out and don't want to pick up a phone. Yeah. Like you, you mentioned some of the signs that they don't mm -hmm. want to. Yeah, get involved somebody in can ring on their behalf, we'll provide them with all of the information and we can get them in for an assessment. Yeah, and, and there's some success stories, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. all the time, every day. You, you know one? That all of our clients, you know, when they come into us, um, you can physically see that they're in a bad place. Within a couple of weeks of our treatment, it's like a different person coming through the doors. Yeah. Um, we're very unique because we are very non-clinical. You are greeted with a warm smile, yes. a cup of tea, 
and our services we've got candles lit it's just so oh, excellent you know far from being that cold clinical environment um mm. people feel right at home they're so comfortable with and us and we get all the information uh, on your website yes everything's walk. on the website yeah and for the walk as well and again the walk is june 8th june 8th yeah and it's going to start at what park uh Gaelic Park Gaelic and we Park. walk into Van Cortland Park so the address and all of the details can be found on the website, the website? and registration page um, solacehouseinc.com thank you so much yeah thank, thank you. you for coming okay Rebecca Sked and she's the CEO of Solace House thank, thank you, you so much, much. thank come you come on share, share more okay? <laughs> let us know more uh, we've got to take a quick break right here but stay right there we'll be back open up your books to page 360 did you just look at your phone while you was in class you played yourself about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the morning show open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Why don't you ever see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're really good at it. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. Well, welcome back. We're going to make our next guest feel nice and comfortable. You know, on May the 4th, empowering marginalized women and girls will host a, a pre-Mother's Day small business pop-up. Joining us with all the details, we have founder Mystique Childs. She's the vice president, Darlene Cruz. Treasurer, Charlene Williams, we welcome you to the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. First time? Yes. We, yes. Have, we always have an initiation thing for our first time oh. guests. <laughs> Are you ready for it now or you want to wait until after? You? After. Uh. <laughs> 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 but no, we're sitting in your living room, the most favorite place that you can think of. That's where we are. So take a deep breath. Ready? That's where we are right there. Okay. Now tell us about this wonderful event that you uh, set up or your wonderful programs. Yes, so um, I started empowering marginalized women and girls because the Bronx has ongoing health issues for women, yeah. um, face poverty. Uh, many of the residents are below the uh, poverty line. And so I wanted a program to address the social issues that women face as well as poverty mm -hmm. and as, as educational disparities. And our mission is basically to empower women. And so the idea for the pre-Mother's Day pop-up was born out of that idea. Uh -huh. And so what we wanted to do is have an event where we could feature local talent, um, local women-owned businesses, and just have a nice event for all of them to come and broadcast their products and their services. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the idea was born. And we got the local talent right here. <laughs> we just have to add to it, right? <laughs> so pop-up. Yes. Well, how'd you come up with that? Just show up? 
Well, yeah. jump into um, the house. Kaboom! Guess who stepped <laughs> in the room? Stuff like that. Well, um, um, Anna Tejada from Tejada's Driving School offered us her spot, who is oh. also a local entrepreneur. She oh. offered us her spot to use to feature this event. And so we'll be having so many good products, um, natural skin care products, scrubs, salts, facial um, mask. We'll also be having jewelry, food. It's, it's just going to be a really wonderful event. And if some of the proceeds from that event will go to sponsor uh -huh. our, um, our support groups. So, so, Charlene, you can really go in there and get pampered out, right? Yes, and also... Um, <laughs> women get a chance to showcase their products. I mean, it's important for us as women to empower each other. So that's the concept that we were going with. And also talking about pop-up, it pop-ups are very popular now. It's, you know, it's a place to just say, let you, you ladies come in here and we got you. Yeah, David Levy says that he's on a WBLS. Uh, you know, reggae song comes on and says, pop up, pop up, pop up. <laughs> Is that the same pop up? <laughs> 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 but that's excellent that you guys started this. Because um, women, you know, women need to be pampered. Men need to be pampered too. Can men come? Yes. Yes. Yes, men is absolutely invited. We just, it's important to us that we feature women-owned businesses, but men uh, are definitely invited. Come out, get some gifts for your mom, for your wife, for, for whoever, for Mother's Day. Can you come in and get your toes and nails and everything did? Well, we're Done. not quite going to do it for you, but we're going to show you how to do it right. Get your skin ready. We're going to show you how to get your skin nice and uh -huh. shining and ready for spring. Look like yeah, you're feeling nice and comfortable scrub. right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So how's it going to look? I mean, we're going to come. Everything's under one roof. Where's it going to be? It's going to be at 424 Grand Concourse. Um, uh -huh. Easy to get to by the two, five train, the four train. Um, this number of buses. 424? Yeah. What, what is that next to? It is back down the block from Hostos College. Yes. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah, I know exactly, exactly. where it is. Yes. Yeah. yes. So yeah. it's in Tejada's driving school. So it's, it's a small driving school located on the Grand Concourse. Uh -huh. Like I said, easily accessible. Um, we're going to probably have a table outside so you'll know we're there. Uh -huh. And no. yeah, and we just invite people to come in. What's the date? It's going to be May 4th. May 4th. And it's 4th. starting at 3, 3 p.m. Uh -huh. All right, get your Bronx cameras ready. Get ready. You guys going to videotape and take pictures and everything? Yeah. Sure, yes, can you come of back? Course. We can show that in the background. Oh, like yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. We would love to do that. That's excellent. Okay. We would really love to thank Anna Tejada from Anna from the driving school for letting us I know you've do been hitting her throughout the whole yeah. segment. Because so yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. Did she teach you how to drive? Actually, I did learn how to drive. <laughs> Come to think of it, I did. Thank you. I did do that. Yeah, she's a, she's a good lady for letting us do this. That's good. That's good. Okay. Keep on teaching us. What's her name again? Anna Tejada. Anna, do your thing. <laughs> Big up to you in your driving school. <laughs> I right, said, so we're going to come that day, and how's it going to look? We're going to come inside. There'll be a table outside. We'll come in and see what? You're going to come in, and you're going to just see different tables with different products. Um, so we're going to have a range of products, natural skin care products. We're going to have Caribbean food. Um, we're going to have some oh. jewelry. We're going to actually have a wigs and beauty lines um, by CK Beauties. Oh, okay. um, so it's going to be... It's going to just be fun for the whole family. We're going to have different show? products for everybody. Uh, no fashion We're not That's a thought, well, we though, right? About that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's thought. definitely a thought. But, yes, it's going to be a little something for everybody. I and um, leave I can't forget custom-made gift baskets. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Okay. yes. Right. Who's making them? We are. Oh, <laughs> <there you> go. <laughs> not just for Easter, but no. Easter it's and beyond. It's for Mother's Day. Mother's yeah, Day. yeah, yeah for Mother's Day. Day. Yeah. So you're going to make them all year round or just for Mother's Day? No, we'll make everything. Because that could every be a separate business, have. you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, every product we have, you can order. Even if we run out that day, yeah. we'll have um, where you can no, order. No, because people have future. galas and things like that. People looking for baskets and stuff. To yes. Get yeah. So uh, just another idea to take with you. Yes, yeah. that's, 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 that's a great idea. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, thank you, you so you. much for that one. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Yes. All right, so um, how can we get more information on what you're doing? Well, you can look at our website, which is www.emwgonline.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can also feel free to email any of us. Um, I'm mchilds at emwgonline.com. Um, D Cruz. D Cruz at emwg. Online.com. Say it again. No. <laughs> that was a mouthful, right? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to just reach out to Mount Carmel sure. Senior Center for their support and uh -huh. come into our events and, and 
and just well, you might as well big us. up everybody right now. You got thirty <laughs> seconds. Who else? Who else? Um, Shout outs. <laughs> To our family members that family. support yes. us. Yes, Absolutely. Definitely. And I just want to put out there, we are going to be starting survivors groups um, oh, for women in the Bronx. And we are, if anyone wants us to come in and run our groups from their location, uh -huh. feel free to contact us. I like it. I yes. like it. All right. <laughs> Darlene, Charlene, and Mystique. Yep. Yes. Thank you guys so much. What's the name of the organization again? Empowering Marginalized Women and Girls, EMWG. EMWG, sure. and they have something on Mother's Day. Pre yeah, Mother's Day. Yep. Pre Mother's Day. Yep. Okay. yep. May Thank 4th. you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. We'll for take a quick us. break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more open next. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Welcome back. Our next guest is the CEO of No FICO Score Group. He joins us today for a look at the, all the wonderful things that they're talking about. Now, wait a minute. You, you're not a stranger to the show. No, it's We've been talking be about real estate and real estate and real estate and how you can benefit from it and how, what you should do and shouldn't do and all of this. We welcome you to the show. Gail is in the house. Give her a big round of applause, everybody. Gail Allen, CEO of No FICO Score Group. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank welcome. you for having me. You're thank looking you. beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're very charming this morning. And thank you for all your help and, you know, in uh, the past shows. You know, a lot of people learned a lot, and, uh, of course, they come and contact you and, and get yes, into real yes, estate. Yes, and that's my pleasure. That's yes. what I'm here for. And we're talking about short sales this morning. Absolutely. Well, this is the time of the year. I mean, it's the uh, beginning of the season for property buying, you know, home, uh, first time home buyers, investors that want to get their feet wet. Springtime uh, is a good time. Springtime is a good time. Also, interest rates are low, uh -huh. which is always good for an investor because you can get in at a good rate. And I always say, Bob, that you make your money when you purchase the property, if it's an investment, not after you get it and you renovate and you fix it up. No, 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 no. You make your profit on the purchase. Go in. Go Get in, the front load the going. That's right. <laughs> Get it going. So and wait a minute. What the heck is a short sale? Well, let me explain it this way. It's very simple. Let's say you are an owner of a property. It's a two-family. You paid um, seven hundred for it. Uh, now it's worth because of the market. Maybe it's gone down. Maybe it's only worth about maybe five hundred. But also, uh, maybe the spouse. I mean, you, you disagreed and you broke up and you didn't repair the property. It was never maintained. So maybe it has a market value of 400 now. And so how can you sell to pay off your debt? You owe 700 but the property has a market value of four. Yeah. And so what you do, rather than uh, uh, allow the property to be foreclosed upon by the bank, what you want to do is call up the bank and ask for a short sale. Uh, a, a short yeah. sale will remove any deficiency judgment. So if it sells for 400 or 350, uh -huh. in, in your case, maybe 325, you know, uh, because you try to get it as low as possible, the balance of what the seller owes is, is waived. It's called a deficiency, a waiver of the deficiency judgment. Yeah. And that's why you do a short sale. It allows you to get out with a clean, fresh start. 
Right. And it allows an investor to get in. Exactly. The investor that's getting in. With all of this potential can, for equity. Exactly. And all you've got to so do is renovate. So you buy low, but the house is, if, it's, if you buy it for three, 300000 the that's house right. is worth 500000 you're two hundred thousand dollars in without doing the thing. Equity, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, and they equity is like having your own bank, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's like cash in the bank. Yeah, they'll do this for everyone mm. except the owner of that property. Wow. Okay, the owner of the, the property bank really has doesn't the, want it. The no, bank, they don't want it. Yeah. They, they don't want it. So short sales is a way to get. Now, now I was speaking to a, a lady outside. She uh -huh. was saying, "I would love to get into short sales, but I feel you need a lot of cash to do so." Most people feel that you do, but not necessarily so, because there's something called partnering. You can find a partner. So if you find a property, real easy. Let's say it's a one family. It's in Queens. It's in the Bronx. Let's say it's the purchase price of uh, four fifty. If you were to renovate it. It may be worth something like seven fifty, eight hundred, because maybe it has a mother, daughter, or an extra apartment. Ah. Okay. So what you'll do is you'll try to get that property for four hundred thousand, uh -huh. and you'll get it under contract. Now you look for a partner. Did you hear what I just said? We'll look for a partner. You'll look for a partner. You'll get that property under contract by saying to the seller, "I want to buy that property. I'm going to buy it for four hundred thousand. Uh, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars as a good faith." A down payment, and he'll see sh he, he or she will say yes because they know that they're going to get a waiver of a deficiency judgment. They're yeah. going to walk away clean. Right. They can never sell for what they owe. Now, you being who you are, very very smart man, you're going to say to someone who is cash rich and say, "Listen, I need um, I need twenty five thousand uh, dollars for a down payment, and then I need someone to sign." She, she's following you. She said, I'm going to do You're this. You're going to do that, I huh? I want these steps. I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. You'll find a partner. who, And you'll, you'll, follow, you'll probably find someone, if it's a really good deal, they'll say, hey, listen, Judy, listen, Dr. Bob Lee, I'll tell you what, this deal is so good. I will give you 100% of the purchase price, and I'll do the renovations. Uh, make me a partner for... 30 cents. Of course, they may at 30 percent, they may ask you for 50 percent, uh -huh. but you're going to try to take right, it down, right, you right. know. Now, did you go in your pocket for anything? No. But what did you do? You were able to go to the seller, the original owner of the property, negotiate with them and say, listen, I'll get you out of this bad mortgage. Let's do a short sale. And you'll walk away clean. And on top of that, the seller can receive up to twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 relocation fee. From the bank. Ooh. From the bank. Now, wait a bank. minute. I don't know about that part. Where did that part come from? Absolutely. This is incentive for... So a lot of people don't know that. Of course you know, not. I can't afford this. I, You know, the bank is after me. I'm behind. Yeah. I'm going to just... They dumped the whole thing the last and walk thing away with do, nothing. The last thing you should do is walk away. Yeah. Because, first of all, you'll <clears> have that judgment on you. There's always a way out. There's always a way out. Just ask around. And you, when your bank calls you and you're behind in your, your payment, the worst thing you can do is put your head in the sand. Answer the phone. Be your charming self. Gee, I wish I could pay it. But there, is there something else we can do? Maybe a loan modification? No, I'm yeah, not they working. they may have some ideas. Yeah, they may have some they ideas. Help. They may give you a forbearance for the next six months where you'll pay nothing. But you have to ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. You don't know. That's it. You better ask somebody. If you don't you know, better you better ask, ask somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and it isn't always your boo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's a person that's uh, an associate at work uh -huh. that wants to do business with you that wants to get into real estate. Uh -huh. I meet so many women who really want to get into real estate, and they think it's difficult, and it isn't difficult at all. Not at all. I if, you can, if you can do math, you can do real estate. You can do real estate. Make some money. Make you some You want to make money. some money, call. Right. You call Gail Allen. You call me at 973-389-3347, or you can visit my website at askgailaboutrealestate.com, or... You can email me at let Gail help you. Let Gail help <laughs> at you. Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. Gail Allen, give a big round of applause, everybody. CEO of No FICO <laughs> Score Group LLC. Thank you. Thank Always you. Always a wealth of me. information. Thank you. I'm going to walk side by side with you every step of the way. <laughs> okay. We're going to make some money. Uh, elbow to okay. elbow. Ready? Elbow to elbow. <laughs> We're going to get that building for you. Yeah, That's we need that do. building to make the great building. Absolutely. Oh, man. We gotta take a quick break from my man Bobby C is on the set and he's ready to do his thing. I, he, kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Bobby C is next.
patriotism. It inspires passionate debate, and it's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Let's begin on the NBA hardwood. The Garden of Faithful got a chance to say goodbye to Dwayne Wade Saturday night at the world's most famous arena. The New York Knicks led early, but the Heat and Wade rallied late. Deion Waiter scored 28 points. Wade added 16 in his last game at Madison Square Garden, and Miami beat the Knicks 192. I posted a few things to my Instagram at the voice Bobby C. Here's a small clip of Wade talking about playing at the Garden. Check it out. I'll be here, I'm sure, a few other times in my life, but... As a player, this is your last time. Just want to enjoy it. You know, the fans stayed around, um, and that was so cool, man, to be able to have that. You know, you, you expect that at home. You know, maybe your last time, but um, on the road, you don't you don't expect that. So for me, it was great. Um, I wish I got an opportunity to spend more time with it, but it was a little chaotic. Um, but uh, it was really real cool. I'll have more on the next star who could be lacing them up at the world's most famous. In the C-list, stay tuned. The biggest NBA star in the city calls Brooklyn home. D'Angelo Russell scored 20 of his 29 points in another blistering third quarter against Boston, leading the Brooklyn Nets to a 110-96 victory over the shorthanded Celtics on Saturday night. Deloading and the Nets are trending toward a playoff spot. On the baseball diamond, the Bronx Bombers came out and looked like World Series champs on Thursday's opening day. But of course, nothing is won on day one. Case in point, Saturday and Sunday at the big ball park in the Bronx. Renato Nunez, Trey Mancini, and Joey Ricard hit Baltimore's first home runs of the year, and the Orioles started strong at Yankee Stadium, beating New York 7-5 Sunday in a game delayed more than three hours by rain. The projected lowly O's had taken a series from the Yankees, winning Saturday and Sunday. In losing Sunday's game to Baltimore, the Yankees dropped their season opening series. How, you ask? Largely due to an inability to drive in runs with men on base. The Yankees went 6-29 for with runners in scoring position in the series, stranded 33 base runners in three games. Few positive notes from the weekend. One was Tulo. Working his way back from ankle and heel injuries, Troy Tolowitzki hit his first home run since July 8, 2017. On Saturday, the ninth inning homer sparked a rally, but the Yanks still fell 5-3 to the Orioles at Yankee Stadium. On the flip side, the Mets won the first two games of the season and looked primed for a sweep on Sunday. That was until Trey Turner turned up. Turner homered twice, including a game-ending solo shot in the ninth inning, and the Washington Nationals beat the amazing 6-5 on Sunday for their first win of the season. A day prior, the Mets won their second game of the season. J.D. Davis delivered a tie-breaking two-run single in the eighth inning, and rookie Pete Alonzo contributed three hits and two RBI as the new-look Mets improved to 2-0 with an 11-8 victory over Washington on Saturday. So, the Mets are 2-1, the Yankees are 1-2. Lots of baseball to go, nonetheless between now and October, the Mets will return to Queens Thursday for their home opener. On the ice, Ryan Strom scored for the third consecutive game, and the New York Rangers beat the Philadelphia Flyers 3-0 on Sunday. The Broadway Blue Shirts and the New Jersey Devils just playing out the string at this point. Not the same story for the New York Islanders, though. The Isles clinched a playoff berth for the first time since 2016 with a 5-1 victory over the Buffalo Sabres on Saturday night. Congrats to them. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. The reigning National League MVP became the sixth player in MLB history to start a season with homers in four consecutive games. Hello, Christian Yelich. The other five are Willie Mays, 1971, Mark McGuire, 1998, Nelson Cruz, 2011, Chris Davis, 2013, and Trevor Story, 2016. For all the success he's had lately, Yelich remains at a loss for words 
words whenever he's asked how he managed to get so locked in at the plate for so long. Yelich is a star, and so is the new guy in St. Louis, maybe the most underrated player in the show. It hasn't taken Paul Goldschmidt long to endear himself to St. Louis Cardinals fans. The former two-time National League MVP runner-up was acquired in a major offseason trade with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And in just his second Cardinals game, he's already managed a huge impact after smashing three home runs in Friday's 9-5 win against the Milwaukee Brewers. Those are two guys to build a fantasy team around. The Knicks are hoping they could say the same about their young point guard in the future. That won't be now, though. Knicks second-year point guard Frank Nielakina has been shut down for the remainder of the season after aggravating a groin injury earlier this week. Speaking of being shut down, Los Angeles Lakers coach Luke Walton said that his star player, LeBron James, wanted to finish out the season, but the team convinced him otherwise. The Lakers announced this weekend that James would be held out of the final six games to allow his strained left groin to fully heal. What's up with all these groin injuries? A once injured NBA star could be in a lot of trouble if reports are true. Dallas Mavericks forward Chris Stapps Porzingis is accused of raping and beating a woman while he was a member of the New York Knicks last year. Through his representatives, Porzingis claims the charge is categorically untrue and part of a fraudulent attempt to extort him of tens of thousands of dollars. This developing situation could lead to a multifaceted legal fallout for the 23-year-old former Nick. According to Tina Moore of the New York Post, the alleged sexual incident occurred at around 2 a.m. on Wednesday, February 7, 2018. Hours earlier, the 7'3 Porzingis had torn his ACL and his left knee during a game between the Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks at MSG. Porzingis has not played since that injury, but is expected to return for the start of the 2019 20 season. When he does, this St. John's star could be in the league. Shamari Pons, who led St. John's with 19.7 points and 5.1 assists this season, wrote on Instagram that he'll enter the 2019 NBA draft. In other college hoops news, Duke's quest for a national championship came to an end on Sunday as Michigan State outlasted the Blue Devils 68-67. Great game. The biggest story in college basketball since November. Duke fell short of the Final Four. That leaves us with Texas Tech, Michigan State, Auburn, and Virginia in the Final Four on the men's side. After four memorable Elite Eight games, number one seed Virginia will face number five seed Auburn in one national semifinal with number two seed Michigan State battling number three seed Texas Tech in the other. Zion Williamson's, you know, he's just given... Duke fans and college basketball fans and pretty much the entire sports world a heart attack when he injured his knee in February. The culprit was a Nike sneaker that couldn't contain his explosiveness. The shoe essentially split apart at the seam, causing him to slip. The shoe is blown out, but it's not worthless, according to TMZ. It's worth a lot of money, actually, or it will be as soon as someone finds it. TMZ says it could fetch $250,000. Them some expensive Nikes, Bob. In women's college basketball, Kate, Katie Lou Samuelson put UConn on her injured back and shot the Huskies into a record 12th straight Final Four. Samuelson scored 29 points and second seed to UConn held off number one Louisville 80-73 on Sunday in the Albany Regional Final. To NASCAR, Denny Hamlin overcame two pit road penalties to earn his second win of the season. Hamlin raced to his second NASCAR Cup victory of the season, overcoming two penalties on pit road and missing the entry another time during green flag conditions Sunday in Texas. While Hamlin led the final 12 laps and 45 of the 334 overall, Joe Gibbs racing teammate Kyle Busch missed out on the chance for a triple header weekend sweep. Defending champion Lewis Hamilton took advantage of some misfortune by Ferrari to claim a dramatic victory for Mercedes in this past weekend's Grand Prix. The five-time champion, who looked to be heading for second, gained the lead with 10 laps remaining thanks to engine problems for Ferrari. Mark Marquez obliterated the opposition in the Argentina MotoGP Grand Prix to take victory by over nine seconds. The reigning world champion beating second place Valentino Rossi with Marquez holding position off the line. It was a case of head and hammer down for the number 93 as he bolted to a one second lead on lap one with that gap increasing to 2.4 after lap two as it soon became a race for second. Those are the headlines. It might soon be a race for second in the NBA draft because I'm here to tell you why Zion Williamson is a lock for number one.
This morning's New York Daily News has a column calling for Duke's R.J. Barrett to go number one. He's a terrific player. He could go number two in the NBA draft. So could Ja Morant, who, like Barrett, would easily be competing for the top pick in most seasons, as I have said in this space before. But Zion Williamson is different. Zion's historic season at Duke includes being the only freshman to ever win ACC Player of the Year and ACC Tournament MVP. He's the third freshman to record 500 points. 50 steals and 50 blocks. The other two, Anthony Davis and Kevin Durant. Yeah, his 68% shooting from the field is the best by any freshman in D1 history. And his 104 points through four NCAA March Madness games are the second most ever by a freshman. Add in the fact that he passes the eye test in every way. And New York Knicks fans should be praying to God Almighty every night before they go to sleep that the ping pong balls turn up in their favor. Go get... Number one pick, go get Zion. For anyone that gets the number one pick, the answer will be Zion. Tough not to have him in the final four, but now he's one step closer to the NBA. Don't be a fool. Get Zion. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby C. Welcome, 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 welcome back. Hey, on April the 13th, the Theta Rho Sigma Bronx chapter, they're going to hold their April showers. April showers, it's a beautiful event, uh, honoring seven young mothers. That's coming your way. And joining us with all the details, we have uh, Tamla James and uh, Desiree Morris, Sauls. Thank you for We're having us. Thank yes. you for having us. All right. Uh, what's the call? <laughs> <laughs> You always got to hear that sorority call. Um, so you guys have been working on this for some time, right? Yes. What, what college did you guys graduate from? Um, so I actually joined Theta Rho Sigma as a part of the graduate chapter. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And undergrad, I went to St. John's University. All right. All righty. Mark, did Mark Jackson graduate from there? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but so what do, you have, what do you guys have? You, you're working with mothers? Yes, so April Showers is one of Federal Sigma's annual community service projects. And uh -huh. through this event, we work with expectant mothers um, oh. in need in yeah. all in the Bronx community. Uh -huh. And um, we provide them with educational information, access to community resources, and um, information that will allow them to, uh, allow them to be better mothers, um, to That's prepare good. for parenthood. Yeah. And, um, so and you guys got the colors on, you're ready to go. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> looking good, looking good, looking good. Thank you. You want to give a shout out to any of the uh, Sauras out there? Um, we'd like to, of course, give a shout out to all the members of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated right. internationally, and there specifically our chapter, the Theta Rho Sigma Bronx Alumni Chapter, the Trendsetting Divas. Okay. Did you guys first, did, this is the first time you're coming up with this event, or you've been doing it for some time? No, we've been doing this program for quite some time uh -huh. now, uh, well over 15 years. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is not a newbie. No, no. it's not. <laughs> so how's it going to look? What are we going to do? So in addition to the education, I would step in the room and be on the side watching the whole thing. Maybe with a camera. I don't know. Sure, you're you welcome can. to come. More than welcome to be there. So in addition to the um, educational components of our program, uh -huh. it's also a traditional baby shower in the sense that we shower the moms with gifts. Uh -huh. We play shower games. Yeah. We have food and music, and we just have a good time. I don't know if you want me there. But the major component of there. our shower is the <laughs> educational component. Yeah. That's good. So you're teaching them what? So our uh, focus changes from year to year. In the past, we've had uh, OBGYN speak to the mothers about the childbirthing process and what to expect. 
Yeah. We've had registered nurses talk about the importance of prenatal care. We've had the March of Dimes speak about the, again, the importance of prenatal care and postnatal care for mm -hmm. the mothers. And this year we have a nonprofit organization coming in to talk oh. to the mothers about resources in the community that, yeah. uh, that will assist them through the to their pregnancy and after childbirth. And yeah. we also have a doula that will come in and speak with the young women. Oh, you guys are gonna be busy. So wait a minute, uh, are guys involved? Do you have somebody talking to them about uh, going through the whole process, breathing and all that stuff, breathing exercise? So primary concern is for the yeah. mothers and to prepare uh, them and get them ready for the um, for motherhood. There you go. So the mother can say, hey, you know, I want you to what they call it, Lamont classes or something? Lamont. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I've been so long. My, my kids are like people now. <laughs> I'm not going to go a step further than that. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, you got to have those classes uh, also. So that's maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe next we'll consider year. that. Yes. <laughs> I've, I'm, I'm always coming up with sharing information with the people. I, I enjoy doing that. So, um this event is coming up. Um, what do you believe is so important uh, in helping these young mothers? I think for the young mothers, it's really important just to know that they have women who are supporting them and will provide them with knowledge and education. Mm -hmm. These particular young ladies are um, young ladies who also may live in foster in the foster care system, and so they don't have their own families to yeah, yeah. support them. Um, and so the baby shower, while it is fun. Um, it is really a way, as Desiree said, just for us to provide education uh -huh. and information to yeah, them yeah. so that they can become the best moms they can be. And you are their family. Absolutely. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yes. That's good. All right. Oh, do you have a website where we can go and get more information on what you're doing? Absolutely. So if you'd like more information about um, this particular event or any of the other service events that we have going on in the mm -hmm. Bronx, you can visit us at www.thetarosigma.net. Mm -hmm. Last word? Uh, it's a uh, well worth um, event, and we welcome donations from the community. Uh -huh. and, um, donations? donations. To yes. what, what, what's the website again? So, uh, www.thetarosigma.net, or we can also be followed on Instagram at TRS1922. Hard rap, they're telling me. Can you hit me with that? Yes. Go ahead. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. We'd like to thank our guests for joining us. So thank you. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in. And for tuning in. And you can catch the re cable cast tonight at 5 and 10 p.m. and watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. And you can tune in Wednesday, all new show with our host Darren Jaime. For all of us here at Bronxnet, have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember this what you are is God's gift to you, and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice. Let your choice control the chooser. I'll see you on the radio over 107.5 WBLS tonight. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. Love you all. Peace.